Hey everybody, welcome back to Viking MTG. And uh, we're going to crack a box of uh, Exelon. Many Magic the Gathering players like to ask, is Exelon worth it? And uh, a month ago, I would have said hell no. But now, with the drastic price increase on several cards in this set, I say yes. We're going to see how we do. Uh, I have some... Some, uh, what do you say, attachment to this set. This is the set I came back to playing in. So we got some shifting in that box. Either that or they packed one less card. Definitely off. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Um, I've never had a box with one less pack. I've never seen that. Hopefully I never do. Uh, I've... I came back into the game um, playing again. I've, I've collected since the beginning and never stopped. Literally since the beginning of the game. I was working at Super Kmart when, in 1993, 94, when the game came out. Stocking groceries and pushing carts. Mostly pushing carts. And I did uh, start purchasing this product the moment it hit the shelves. And I had a lot of fun with it, played it, and then got out of it um, after I first time I deployed. So we have a Stormfleet Aerialist, Raiders Week, Unclaimed Territory, $3 card right now, and a treasure map. That's a great start. I better pull up the price list here because I know it has changed. There's cards that have blast it up in price and there's cards that have dropped hard all right where are we sitting at I know our big winner right now of course search for Ascanta Burnish Tyrant, Vraska's Content, Vraska Relic Seeker, Solar Wreckage is 7 Dragon Catacomb, Legion's Landing, Growing Rights I got so many Growing Rights on um, some Petal Grove. There's a lot of great cards in here. Vanquisher's Banners, five bucks. Star of Extinction, somehow five dollars. It's great value in this set. And the best part is two of the best cards are rares. Church of Ascana is a rare, and Vraska's Contempt's a rare. So, very good chance of getting those. You have a Steadfast Armasaur. Siren Storm Tamer, which I believe right now is at $4. Yes, it is. $4.50 for an uncommon. Dark Nourishment and an Angrath's Marauders. Terrible card. A Foil Emergent Growth. I suppose you could brew it, but I think it's an absolutely terrible card. I've never seen it. I haven't even seen it played outside uh, Limited. A folk token and a swamp. I've literally never seen it played in standard. Yeah, it isn't even above a dollar. I don't think it is. No, it is not. It's like a 10 cent card. All right. Alright, we have a foil in this pack. We have an Imperial Lancer, a Dire Fleet Captain, Glorifier of Dusk, and a Ripjaw Raptor. Great card. Still an outstanding card. And a foil Stormfleet Pyromancer. Ripjaw Raptor is a... It's a threat. You get that on the board, it's real tough to deal with because it's 5 toughness. And anytime it takes any sort of damage, they draw a card. It's a great way to draw cards. It's a lot of effects that trigger the, the Enrage. And you can just swing away with it. I know many times I've been willing to take the damage versus giving them the card draw. Let's see, that's the biggest problem in green. In green as a whole is card draw, and that solves that problem. Belligerent brought it on. Lightning Rig Crew, Shapers of Nature, and a Primal Amulet. 
there's so many ways to trigger that in Rage. There's, there's got to be 20 cards in Standard that allow you to trigger that in Rage and not have any real downfalls for yourself, so to speak. You can even shock him if you're playing green red. You can shock him, get the draw trigger for one mana. We have a wild growth walker, call to the feast, imperial aerosaur, and a spell swindle. I'm not saying that that's the ideal play. I'm saying if you don't have a rile or whatever you know cards that are meant to trigger the enrage, they're kind of designed for it. All you have is a shock in your hand. You can use that to trigger him, and it's very effective. We have a Vicious Conquistador. We have a foil here. Thundering Spineback, Emissary of Sunrise, and an Ashes of the Abhorrent. Terrible card, and I hate pulling it. Foil Island. I like foil lands. I know a lot of people scoff. Oh god, foil land. But they're alright. I just realized other than the Gateway Plaza, I didn't have a foil land in my... Uh... Oh, never mind. Thinking out loud. We have uh, Lookout's Dispersal. Great, great counterspell if you're playing Pirates. Fuller Fire of Dusk. Another unclaimed territory. And a Sanctum Seeker. There's a lot of hidden value in this set. And that is why it is as good as it is. That's why it's back up to $100 expected value. You have Siren Storm Tamer, Field of Ruin, and Unclaimed Territory for Uncommons that are $2 and up. It's pretty unheard of to have three cards in a set of that much value that are uncommons. It's just, it's literally unheard of. In standard, at least. Verdant Rebirth, Lightning Strike, Seeker Squire, and a Settle the Wreckage. So we're doing real well so far. Treasure Map, Ripjaw Raptor, two Unclaimed Territories, and a Settle the Wreckage. I really want to see that Tyrant. I'd love to see another Carnage Tyrant. I'd love to see, even more than that, I'd love to see a Vraska Relic Seeker. I've got a play set of Carnage Tyrants and Vraska's Contempts. That doesn't mean I wouldn't like seeing another one. Uh, I wouldn't mind a Search, of course. We have a Slice and Twain, Duskborn Sky Marcher, Dire Fleet Captain, and a Growing Rights. It's at six bucks right now and going up. It's so easy to trigger with the Selesnia deck, and then you combine that with March of the Multitudes. You can pretty early get a real big March of the Multitudes off. And we have a Vicious Conquistador, Rigging Runner. Great card in Pirates. Ranging Raptors. And a Hostage Taker. Hostage Taker is still a cool card. Does not have the value it once had. I don't even think it's a $2. It might be around 2 bucks. Yeah, it's still a $3 card. It's still a great card. Uh, Tristani definitely hurts its playability. But you can kidnap the, you can take hostage the uh, Tristani and then not cast her from Hostage Taker. Just leave her there. And her return effect doesn't work. We have an elaborate fire cannon, Trove of Temptation, Snapping Sailback, and a Tishana is our first mythic. Not the mythic you're looking for. Definitely not, but it's still a cool mythic. Still a cool card. Certainly playable. It's just so expensive. If there was a way to reduce her cost, it'd be great. We 
We have a Perilous Voyage, Raider's Wake, Deathless Ancient, and a Carnage Tyrant. Bam! I had a feeling about this box. I don't know why. I just did. Just sitting in the case all by its lonely self. I said, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Be right back, folks. I desperately need a drink of water. Ten seconds. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Need a drink of water. So I'm super happy my Vikings won again. They beat the Eagles, which I think is the uh, knocking off the defending Super Bowl champions. Certainly helped their confidence, and the defense is back. I know probably not a lot of you guys are football fans, but I'm a big football fan, and it was really good to see that. We have a Rallying Roar, Perilous Voyage, Bellowing Aegisaur, and a Fathom Fleet Captain. The NFL kind of pissed me off recently with all the controversy on when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to Magic the Gathering, when it comes to NFL, when it comes to TV, all that, you know, anything that I will do recreationally, I don't want to see drama. There's enough drama in the workplace. There's enough drama in real life. When I want to step away and do something fun, I don't want drama involved. I really just want it out of my life as much as possible. I get enough from my daughter. Well, home as a whole. We have a Vine Shaper Mystic, Steadfast Armasaur, Raging Sword Tooth, and a River's Rebuke. You know, if somebody decides they want to take a knee, uh, during the National Anthem. I certainly am not happy about it. You know, I, I served my country, gave a couple of years, gave years of my life to my country. It was a choice I made, of course. Uh, nobody made me do it. And but there's a lot of guys who have sacrificed a lot. And a lot. Sacrificed everything, if not limbs, then actual life. And... As a veteran, it bothers me a bit, but at the same time, I did it to reserve somebody's right to be able to do that. And it's no one else's place to tell them they can't do that, unless the NFL wants to make a rule and say you can't. If they do, then they're a private organization and they have all right. We have a Dusk Legion Dreadnought, Chart of Course, great card. I don't think it has much value these days. A Zoken Archer and a Vanquisher's Banner. There's five bucks. You know, I'm a libertarian. Definitely I'm a libertarian. Not crazy for tear the government down libertarian, but I do think we need a certain amount of government. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like people interfering in each other's lives. I just don't. Leave me to my affairs and... I'll leave you to yours. As long as you're not trying to hurt me and I'm not trying to hurt you or steal from you, you should be good. We have a favorable winds, a bright reprisal, a dead eye quartermaster, and an emperor's vanguard. And our foil is a foil sailor of means. Cool card. Nice. Nothing wrong with a good sailor of means, especially in foil. Sailor of memes, I guess, as it turned out. <laughs> I don't know how I got that title. Um, yeah, you know, I just, when I walk into f and for, you know, for instance, I don't care, I don't look around the room and go, I wonder what that person's political affiliation is. I don't care. I care that if I walk in the room and you'll shake my hand and at least crack a smile, then I like you. If I walk in the room and you look down at the floor and won't even say hi, I don't like y'all that much. We have a Pillar of Origins, a Dinosaur Stampede, a Thundering Spineback, and a Daring Saboteur. Now, I definitely prefer people who take showers 
<laughs> and wear moderately clean clothes. But I don't give a hoot what your political affiliation is. I don't care who you go to bed with. As long as it's not my wife. So, you know, I don't care. But I do have a real problem with people telling other people how to live their lives. And, and what to do uh, with their lives. We have a Siren Storm Tamer. A Dusk Legion Dreadnought. River Sneak. And a Captain Lannery Storm. You know, when you're when you're cracking boxes, I've said this before, when you're cracking booster boxes, you have to find the value. I mean, you got a $4 Siren Storm Tamer, and they're actually selling for $4 a piece right now, actively. You have to go for that value. You have to take advantage of that. You can't just look for the Carnage Tyrant. You have to look for the $3, $4 card. And make sure that you're not leaving that in a pile of bulk. We have an Emergent Growth, Dire Fleet Captain, Lightning Strike, and a Search for Ascanta. So we hit the two best cards in the set. I'm just going to put that in the Mythic Pile because that's where it belongs. No Foil Rare yet, but we're not even a third of the way to the box. Well, we're about a third of the way. I didn't go straight off one pile. Kind of mixed it up. We have a Sleek Schlooner. Sleek Schooner, Ranging Raptors, Call to the Feast, and a Revel and Riches. Nice card. Revel and Riches is fun to play with. Uh, I did a mono black control deck in the last standard. I'm not sure how well it would work now, uh, but I did it. Tons of obstruction, tons of discard, every bit of black removal, Azor's Gateway, this. A whole bunch of token generating pirates. Every way to generate tokens. Four treasure maps. Everything. I got Azor's Gateway flipped. And then throw down a Torment of Hailfire with Azor's Gateway. However much health I have left. And Revel and Riches. Uh, you could either win with Revel and Riches. Or win with uh, Azor's Gateway and Torment of Hailfire. And even if I don't get Revel and Riches off and I get Torment of Hill, uh, Azor's Gateway flip first, I can use all the treasures I have left with uh, Torment of Hellfire. Rallying Roar, Bonded Horncrest, Exelon's Binding, and a Priest of the Awakening Sun. This is a disappointing card. I really tried to brew this in Exelon and Rivals, uh, and even a little bit into Dominaria, and it just. It's an okay, it's a great card in Limited. If you've got enough dinosaurs, you're playing Limited, you got enough dinos, it, try and build off that. But there's just so many better options in Standard. Even for a one-drop, it's just not that playable. And it's too easy to remove. There's still too many Goblin Chain Whirlers out there. We have a Wily Goblin, Deadeye Plunderers, a Danto Vanguard, and a Herald of Secret Streams. And we're back to the point where I'm seeing way too many counter spells in standard. It's getting a little frustrating. And what frustrates me about it, it's not the counter spells themselves that are pissing me off. It's the decks that frankly are junk and are not going to win games. They're just, they're jank. And they're filled with counter spells to trigger creatures to get plus one, plus one for stuff. And they're, all they do is counter your crap, but they're not good enough to win. It's that simple. They're not going to win games. And they just sit there and waste your time. They have a Navigator's Ruin, Ruthless Knave, Emissary of Sunrise. And a Sanguine Sacrament. And I mean, the Teferi thing just doesn't work as well as it did in the last standard. Uh, it really doesn't. Just keeping you from playing and then trying to trigger Teferi. It's too easy to remove. It's Assassin's Trophy, Vraska's Contempt. Um, there's tons of Exile. He's too easy to get rid of. Vraska's Contempt at him. Like, 
Not Vraska's Contempt. Excellent binding him like three times last night with my uh, Boros stack, and they couldn't do anything about it. We had an Emergent Growth, Sheltering Light, Lurking Chupacabra, and an Admiral Beck. Just a moment, folks. Sorry about that little interruption. UPS dropping stuff at the door and ringing the doorbell. So, third mythic, Admiral Brickett Brass. Still no foil rare, only four foils. Of a wanted scoundrel, seeker squire, shapers of nature, and a Maverin fame. Great card. He's gonna see a lot, a lot, a lot of play in the Celestia deck. He's extremely effective. Any token deck, you have to play him. Life game deck too. That along with uh, Legion's Landing. Great. Great combo. Great way to just have overwhelming board presence really fast. If an Inspiring Cleric, Marauding Looter, Lock the Plank, and a Varaska's Contempt. I'm going to put that right there with the Mythics. And Jolly's Collar. Great and great uh, limited. Great card and limited. Fuck the Plank is good creature removal, too. Not seeing very many Merfolk in standard, so definitely would be playable. We have our first Field of Ruin. And pull that out, put that in the rares. Wily Goblin. Merfolk Branchwalker, still a great card. And a Deadeye Tracker. Not the uh, rare you're looking for, but still, that's okay. Do something here. Way to make those cards fit. There we go. Dinosaur in the Plains. Alright, we're getting near the end here. No foil rare. Foil search would certainly be nice. Full growing rights would be cool too. I hit the growing rights, uh, the buy a box promo from the treasure packs that were out at the time. We have a Heartless Pillage, Bellowing Aegisaur, a Tempest Collar, and an Old Growth Dryads. I sold it for 20 bucks. No, it, was, it wasn't 20, it was 33. I sold it for 33 bucks on eBay, that alternate art growing rights. And at the time, it was like a $5 card. It wasn't even 6 like it is now. But people loved that alternate art. Man, people killed for those alternate art promos. And I didn't care that much about them. I'll sell them to you if you really want them that bad. Belligerent Bronodon. Sky Terror. Charging Monstrosaur. And an Entrancing Melody. Terrible card. That and Old Growth Dryads are just terrible cards. Wouldn't even play them in limited. Well, maybe Entrancing Melody. Old Growth Dryads, I wouldn't play it in any format. We have a foil here. We have a Grim Captain's Call, Bishop of the Bloodstained, Air Elemental, and a Sunbird's Invocation. Is this C in play? this come up at all? I thought this would become relevant in the new standard. It's two dollars. We have a foil duress. Planes and a merfolk. Man, we couldn't be any more on with the value cards. 
still looking, uh, still looking for a planeswalker here, but <laughs> we get Carnage Tyrant, Search for Ascana, and Vraska's Contempt. I mean, three best cards on the list, if you look on TCG Player. Only thing we could do better here is hit, uh, um, Vraska. Trove of Temptation. Verdant Rebirth, Dead Eye Plunders, and a Foil Rallying Roar, which means we have a flip card. Conquer's Galleon. Oh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Terrible. Couldn't be much worse. Worst flip card by far. Kite Sail, Free Kite Sail Freebooter is a great card. Kite Sail Freebooter. Better than Conqueror's Galleon, that's for sure. Sentinel Totem. Drover of the Mighty. And a Ruin Raider. Getting near the end, still no foil rare. Usually when I pull a foil rare late, it turns out to be pretty good. Let's see. We have a Sheltering Light, a Rotting Looter, another Unclaimed Territory, that's three, three in one box, impressive, and a Fleet Swallower. Stormfleet Arsonist, Savage Stomp, Fiery Cannonade, and a Fell Flagship. Island and a Vampire. Alright, getting near the end here. Suppose they can deal with the uh, three mythic box. I'd rather hit a fourth mythic and a full rare here. But I'll take what I get. Can't write wizards and say I didn't get a full rare. We have an inspiring cleric, deep root waters, bright reprisal, and a death gorge scavenger. Good hit. Still a good card. Last pack. I'd love to get a full rare here. Very disappointing if we don't. Would be one of two times I've it would be the second time I've ever gotten no foil rare in a box. Since foils became a thing. I don't think we have a foil here. Nope. So we have a box with no foil rare, unless I missed it in there somewhere. We have a makeshift munitions. Come in as speaker. Imperial Aerosaur, what's our last rare? Red. Star of Extinction. So we had a fourth mythic. And it's got some value. Star of Extinction has some value. It's sitting at five bucks right now. Island and a treasure. So, that wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, no foil rare. That's an oddity. Unfortunately. That kind of stinks. Fishing through my com uncommons here, making sure I didn't miss something. The foil rares are... The foils are a little out of order. And the flip packs. Making sure I didn't skim by something. That's a negative. It's a little disappointing, but oh well. It's still a... Uh, Still a great box. Cannot complain about a box with a Carnage Tyrant, a Search, and a Vasquez Contempt in it. Plus most of the great most of the good uh rares. Three unclaimed territories. 
Outstanding box. Very happy with it. Glad I picked it up. Search through this. No, emergent growth is not a rare. Nope. Hmm, weird. All right. Well, I still enjoyed this. Let me make sure none of these are. Nope. So, I still enjoyed it, regardless. And I hope everybody else did. I uh, hope everybody's having a great week. Uh, holidays are getting real close here. Which, when you got a family, means the chaos begins. Plus, uh, my uh, industry in hospitality, we pick up pretty heavily around the holidays. Things get real busy. So if you don't see me on, if you don't see me post a video for two, three days, that's why. You know, real life takes priority. I certainly don't have the um, the viewership. I don't have the subscribers to be a, a full-time job here. But I'm uh, doing my best. I'm no PewDiePie. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.